Hello students, uh, well the poem that I am going to discuss today is called Punishment. Uh, it is a poem written by the famous Irish poet Seamus Heaney and uh, this poem it appears in his collection called uh, North uh, which was published in the year 1975. So the first thing that uh, needs to be mentioned about punishment is that it is a Bok poem. Okay, so now the question arises: What is a Bok poem? Okay, so uh, the you know there were certain poems written by Heaney which dealt with the Bok bodies, and those poems are known as the Bok poems. Now in that category, you have poems like uh, uh, the Toland Man the Grobel man, then punishment that we are going to do, uh, strange fruit, etc. So uh, we need to know what is the meaning of a Bok, Bok, Bok poem. So before understanding the meaning of Bok poem, uh, we need to know what is a Bok body. Okay, And in order to understand the meaning of uh, Bok body, we need to uh, go back to the Irish past, uh, to the Irish history. So. Uh, if we explore the Irish history, then we uh, we become familiar, you know, the uh, with the practice of human sacrifice, you know, that was uh, that was very common in the Irish society. So, amongst the Irishmen, there was a, a general belief that you know, if human offerings were made to the deities, you know, the fertility of the soil would increase. Uh, there would be better harvest. Uh, you know, there would be a regeneration rejuvenation of the land and that is why you know human sacrifices were made okay and once these sacrifices were made you know those bodies were they were dumped into the bogs bogs means the wetlands or the marshy lands okay and uh, these bodies they remained in the uh, <coughs> in the under the bog for a long long period of time and uh, after they were dug up, uh, they came to be known as the bog bodies. So the bog bodies were mainly, uh, primarily they were victims of human sacrifice. But then there were certain bodies, you know, which were dug up, where they were not necessarily the victims of uh, human sacrifice, but they were victims of the, you know, cruel tribal laws of the Irish society, you know, and uh, that is why uh, they were put to death. Uh, so um, this is the uh, this is just a look into the Irish past which is very very essential for understanding the poem okay and at the same time we also need to take a look at the Irish history in the 1960s and the 1970s okay so 1960s 1970s history you know which Heaney himself had experienced that period uh, is known as the troubles you know uh, that uh, that decade it was uh, it was called troubles because of the unrest because of the uh, the violence and the bloodshed that was taking place uh, in Ireland during that time mainly because of uh, uh, the hostility between two groups of uh, forces one was the anti-government and the other one was the pro-government uh, supporters you know so the anti-government supporters uh, they were led by the irish revolutionary army and the irish revolutionary army it was uh, you know it was very notorious for its acts of barbarism for its acts of cruelty you know whoever uh, uh, whoever was suspected of be, uh, having sympathy for the pro-government supporters you know they were uh, dealt in a very cruel manner by this irish revolutionary army okay and women in particular they were the worst sufferers because you know the women they were falling in love with these uh, british troops and that was seen as an act of defiance as an act of uh, um, treachery against the british uh, against the irish nationalism and they were you know punished in the most inhuman in the most gruesome manner like hot uh, boiling tar was poured on their uh, bodies you know the skin peeled off and then they were made to feathers were thrown at them or they were made to roll on a pile of feathers you know uh, so that these feathers they stuck to the wounds for a long period of time as a reminder as a you know as a, a grim reminder of the fact that if you repeat the same mistake if anybody is found to repeat the same mistake they will also 
face the same consequences okay so that was what was happening in ireland in the 1960s and the 1970s so uh, i have given you an idea about the irish past and i have given you an idea of the irish 60s and iron uh, ireland 60s and 70s mainly because it is essential for the understanding of the poem okay now without wasting time let us move to the poem itself <clears throat> i can feel the tug of the halter at the nape of her neck the wind on her naked front now the poet heeny he is dealing with a bog body he is describing the condition of a bog body now this bog body it belongs to a young girl you know who is uh, who has been uh, punished because uh, because of breaking the tribal law and if we read the poem we come to know that her crime was adultery she was guilty of illicit love she was guilty of illegal love and that is why she was ordered to be hanged okay and in the very opening stanza uh, you know the poet he is uh, giving you uh, you know a, a picture of the hanging scene he is recreating that hanging scene for us okay now he says i can feel the tug of the halter at the nape of her neck so i am in support himself he says that you know as the hanging rope is tightening around her neck i can feel uh, i can feel her pain i can feel her suffocation you know as the knot of the hanging rope as the noose of the hanging hanging hope it rope, rope it gradually tightens around her neck you know so he is feeling extreme sorrow and uh, pity for this young girl okay his heart is bleeding for this young girl because she has to die in such a uh, such a manner you know uh, the wind on her naked front now it is very early in the morning when the hanging has been scheduled the hanging is about to take place there's a large crowd of onlookers which who have gathered you know they the and this girl she is being led to the scaffold okay and as she is being led to the scaffold you know uh, the the crowd they are so enraged with her that they have torn away her clothes they have ripped, they have ripped apart her clothes and there is nothing left on her body so she is totally naked okay it blows her nipples to amber beads it cuts the frail rigging of her ribs so a cold wind is blowing it's so cold it's biting cold that you know this girl is uh, shivering she is trembling you know she can't bear the cold and she is trying to pull herself in you know her body has become very taut and tight and he says her nipples have turned into beads her nipples have hardened you know because of the extreme cold they have become as hard as the beads it shakes the frail rigging of her ribs so uh, she is trembling and shivering this girl that the poet says that i can almost hear the sound of the her uh, with the, you know the, the bones of her rib shaking i can almost hear the sound i can see her drowned boggy body in the bog the weighing stone the floating rods and bows now what has happened uh, she ha she is dead and her body has been thrown into the bog okay now these uh, the, the the perpetrators you know the 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 punishers the you know they want to ensure that this body remains under the bog forever it does not float up it, it remains buried under the bog for eternity and that is why they have tied a heavy stone around her body so that it remains you know on the bog bed itself it does not float up it does not come to the surface okay the weighing stone the floating rods and bows so when the body was discovered it was dug up you know a lot of floating uh, rods and bows bows means the branches of trees you know they were found at the digging site okay that was because these rods and these bows were also used to keep the body firmly in place to prevent it from coming up 
okay so that is the reason under which at first she was a barked sapling that is dug up oak bone brain firkin so under which under which means under the bog this girl she was a barked sapling now he uses the phrase barked sapling to give us an idea about her youth okay she was a young girl okay she was just a teenager now sapling what is a sapling sapling is a young plant it is a growing plant which has not fully matured okay so this girl was also a sapling she had just started her life she was just on the cusp of youth there were many more years left to her but unfortunately she had to die okay that is dug up oak bone brain firkin now the body has been dug up and uh, the poet looks at the bones the poet looks at her you know at her remains and he describes her bones to the wood of the oak tree now the oak tree it is no, known for its longevity you know uh, it uh, it has got a very long uh, life span and the wood of the oak tree is very hard okay so what the poet wants to suggest is that you know on the bones of the girl similarly just like the wood of the oak tree they are hard you know they are old they have a lot of strength you know so he wants to convey the idea of strength idea of resilience and the, the fact that these bones have endured for a long period of time they are still intact just like the wood of the oak tree brain firkin again he compares the uh, the the girl's uh, skull with the firkin now what is a firkin firkin is a cask or a container okay it holds something so the skull of the the girl it is like the firkin which contains the brain which encases the brain okay so he is giving us a very meticulous a very detailed and a very graphic account of the various parts of her anatomy the various parts of her body her shaved head like a stubble of black corn her blindfold a soiled bandage her nose a ring so before she was put to death you know her head was shaven off okay uh, her hair was chopped off like a stubble of black corn now when the body has been discovered on the scalp of her head there are tiny root ends of the hair which are, which are left behind now this he compares with the corn fields where you know the harvest has been done the, the the grains have been cut okay so when the harvest has been done uh only the roots you know of the straw they remain they are left behind so he builds up a very uh, <clears throat> beautiful comparison in order to uh, in order to describe the skull of the girl with the tiny roots of the hair left behind her blindfold a soiled bandage her nose a ring so before she was put to death she was blindfolded her eyes were covered with a piece of cloth okay and he calls it the bandage now when the body has been dug up the bandage is still there but it is totally soiled soiled means it has been made dirty dirty by the you know because it has remained underground for so long it has become muddy it has become dirty her nose a ring even the hanging rope is still there but the the knot it has you know it has shrunk to the size of a ring okay it has shrunk to the size of a ring now a ring he draws the imagery of the ring in order to introduce the idea of love okay the love that this girl was guilty of
to store the memories of love little adulteress before they punished you so possibly this ring was gifted to her by her by her lover okay and uh, it was like a symbol of their love okay and the poet calls her little adulteress why because she had she was guilty of the crime of adultery she was guilty of illicit love you were flaxen haired undernourished and your tar black face was beautiful my poor scapegoat now the poet is trying to imagine the physical appearance of this girl when she was alive so he says that i think you must have been very very beautiful you must have been very charming you must have been very attractive your hair must have been flaxen in color you must have possessed a golden tuft of hair undernourished but then uh, by the looks of it you you appear to be uh, very, you appear to be starved and hungry and mal nutrition possibly a reference to the poor background of the girl and your tar black face was beautiful you know your face was beautiful it was tar black no doubt but remember she was not a dark skinned girl she was a um, fair skinned girl but how did her face turn black because black tar was poured on her body black paint was smeared uh, on her face in order to disgrace her you know she was degraded and she was humiliated um, and black paint was you know it was smeared on her face my poor scapegoat now the poet calls this girl a scapegoat uh, who is a scapegoat a scapegoat is someone who has to suffer because of the fault of others okay so so a scapegoat is like a victim now why is the girl a scapegoat because you know she was not the only one who was guilty of love you know the lover both were involved isn't it both loved each other but nothing happened to the young man you know he was meted out no such punishment the girl had to die the girl had to lose her life okay and that is why the poet calls her a scapegoat i almost love you but would have cast i know the stones of silence i am the artful warrior so the poet says that i almost love you now a love uh, a, a love here refers to his uh, sympathy his empathy for this girl the fact that he he's you know he feels extreme grief and sorrow for what the girl went through his heart goes out to her and uh, this is the idea you know behind the word love love not in the usual sense but he says that i almost love you means i sympathize with you but would have cast i know the stones of silence i am the artful warrior but uh, if i had been present on that day at the hanging site at the execution site when you were punished in the most brutal way okay i know i would have been helpless i would not have dared to protest i would have remained uh, a mute spectator you know i would not have had the guts to voice my protest against the injustice that was being meted out to you okay so he says that um, he calls himself uh, guilty of silence the fact that he would not have been able to react I am the artful warrior of your brains exposed and darkened combs your muscles webbing and all your numbered bones so today your body it is preserved in the museum okay uh, now i am the artful warrior i am taking a walk across this museum and inspecting these exhibits inspecting the remains of your body i am like an observer i am like an observer you know of your brains exposed what do i see i can see your brains i can see the dark interiors of your brain dark combs the dark chambers of your bone 
of your brain your muscles webbing your muscles have become wrinkled and withered they have become creased and you know crumpled so i can see that and all your numbered bones so whatever bones have remained those bones are also being uh, you know um, exhibited in the museum and all these bones are numbered okay so that is some kind of documentation that has been done i who have stood dumb when your betraying sisters called in tar wept by the railings now see now there's a transition from the past to the present so abrupt turn you know there's a sudden turn to the present now he he is uh, saying i who have stood dumb when your betraying sisters called in tar wept by the railing so the same thing is being repeated now in ireland you know these girls they are falling in love the british troops and as punishment you know they are being tarred hot tar is being poured on their bodies they have been feathered feathers are being you know um thrown at them okay so this is the most inhuman and painful punishment anyone can go through okay now these girls you know they are being called the betraying sisters why betraying sisters because their love is seen as an act of betrayal being irish you have no right to fall in love with a with the british people you know with the british in fact uh, so um, that is why they are betraying okay and they are weeping by the railings now there was this you know how were these girls punished they were tied to the railings and then you know tar was poured on their bodies or um, they were feathered okay so these girls are weeping because they were very scared they were very, very petrified you know uh, and they are in deep pain and today also the poet says you know i am silent i have stood dumb you know i, I have not reacted i have remained inert you know i i have not raised a voice of protest okay i have let this happen so somewhere uh, there's a sense of guilt you know in him so why he is drawing reference to the present he says he wants to say that you know the times have changed so many years have passed by but the barbaric nature of human beings have remained unchanged have remained constant you know and we call ourselves civilized who would connive in civilized outrage yet understand the exact and tribal intimate revenge so who would connive in civilized outrage so what is trying to say is that in a civilized society such acts of barbarism should not be allowed to take place it is an outrage it is a, a, a violation of the norms of the civilized society okay yet understand the exact and tribal intimate revenge so what is happening in the present society in the so called civilized society uh, there is not much of a difference between the civilized society and the tribal society that we inhabited in the past you know uh, yet understand the exact and tribal intimate revenge so the methods of revenge the methods of violence they have remained the same over the years be it in the tribal society or be it in the modern society be it in the past or be it in the present be it in the then or be it in the now okay nothing has changed you know uh, people are still brutal people are still cruel okay so um, uh, so this is how the poem comes to an end with the poet feeling extremely grieved and angry at the fact that you know uh, even despite the passage of years uh, the brutal nature of human beings have not changed okay so this is the meaning of the poem and uh, <clears throat> i hope you have understood okay Thank you.